In this video, I'm going to talk about how to test the difference between two correlations. And with this procedure, you can test correlations that are dependent and overlapping. And as I mentioned in the textbook, that's probably the most common scenario. So here's the syntax that I used, and this is based on the IBM support website. And I copied and pasted this syntax for which there's a link in the chapter so that you can get to this web page. I'll try to remember to create a SPSS file and then upload it so that you don't have to go to this web page. Who knows, this web page might no longer exist. And so with that syntax, I literally copied it and pasted it into a syntax file. And the way to get a syntax file, if you don't know, you would go on File, New, Syntax. And if you click on that, it will pop up like this. So I got a new syntax file. And then I just pasted that syntax into here, copy and paste. Now you have to set up the correlation data file in such a way that it's consistent with the correlations you want to test. Now keep in mind, the two correlations that you're interested in are going to go into R13 and R23. So it's always going to go in here. These are the two columns of primary interest, if you will. So in this example, the correlation R13 corresponded to this correlation here, 0.65, which was the correlation between antisocial behavior and narcissism. So 1.3 corresponded to that correlation. And then the next correlation was 0.55. And that correlation was right here. These are the two correlations I'm interested in testing for the difference, narcissism and self-esteem. So in your head, whether the correlation is consistent with the same independent variable or the same dependent variable is irrelevant for this syntax file. You just have to keep in mind that these are the two correlations that you want to test the difference for. And they either share an independent variable or they share a dependent variable. And in this example, they share an independent variable. And that independent variable is narcissism. Of course, I could have just flipped it around. It doesn't really make a difference. Narcissism could have been the shared dependent variable. Statistically, it doesn't make a difference. So as long as they share either an independent variable or a dependent variable, you would put the two correlations in this, these two cells here. Now, you also need the correlation between the non-similar variables. So in this case here, the independent variable is actually the same variable. It's narcissism. So what I'm really looking at here for the correlation of 0 0.20 is the correlation between antisocial behavior and self-esteem. Those are the two variables that are switching across the two correlations. And I put that correlation there. There are only three correlations that are possible in this analysis. As long as you remember that the two you want to compare is going there, and then the relationship between either the non-common independent variable or the non-common dependent variable goes into that cell here. So once you have that data set up and you have the syntax copied and pasted into a syntax file, you literally just have to click Run. Run All. And SPSS produces this little output. And you get the R difference here, which is the difference between the two correlations, which is equal to 0 0.10. 0 0.65-0.55 is what the R diff corresponds to. And then we get the lower and upper bound. And as soon as you see that the lower and upper bound intersect 0, 0.00, then you know you don't have a significant effect. So these are the 95% confidence intervals associated with the point estimate difference. And with a Z value of 1.77 and two tails, it corresponds to a P value of 0 0.0765. So I did not reject the null hypothesis of a difference between the two correlations 0 0.65 and 0.55. Now, some people might be inclined to use a one-tailed test. And if you decided to go that route, then you would be able to suggest that there is a difference between the two correlations. 